Warning. You've reached on the box with great comfort and are now in a biblical truth zone. Place all questions about theology, current events, and evangelism on the box where they'll be weighed against the truth of God's Word. Ready your hearts and minds. You're about to be inspired and equipped to fulfill the Great Commission. Programming to engage in five, four, three, two, one. For those of you who did not previously believe in miracles, we know that you now do because the three musketeering, three amigos are back two days in a row. Stooges. I think Stooges. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the Stooges. That would be a better fit. I think so. But do pray for another miracle, and that is that Mark Spence would stop drinking his green stuff. It's not going to be seen on, you've got to see through it. <laughs> it's, uh, folks, that's green. It's not what it looks Mark, like Mark, I'm sorry, but that's just wrong. It is. Wrong. It's, uh, I, what we did with that, we put our grass cuttings on the compost heap. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to ban that once and for all on this program. Wow. It's good to have you back with us, friends. And there is a sense of excitement going on here today because we got to hold in our hands for the very first time the actual first copy from the replicators of evolution versus God. Do you want to hold it, Ray? Oh, yes. <laughs> How does it feel? That feels good. <laughs> it it's is good. very exciting. Yes, Hope Ray was running around my office teasing me and not letting me. <laughs> Hope to makes the heart sick, but when desire comes, it's a tree of life. And yes. It really is. It's, it's very exciting. Right. Now, I do have to tell you, in case you're watching today or tomorrow or in the next few days, this is actually an overrun from the stock that we made for the conference for. Answers, Answers in Genesis, Genesis. Right. the mega conference. The mega conference. If you haven't signed up for that, please be sure to. Mark Spence, myself, Ray, and Eddie will be there, and we're going to do the world premiere of it. But you can still get download orders and pre-order. So DVDs. where can they sign up for it? Evolution. Oh, the uh, at AnswersInGenesis.org. That's it. Yeah, or AIG.org. One, One of the two. Try it out. But be sure to join us. We are excited. We'll be in Seaverville, Tennessee, which, by the way, aside from just going to the conference, there's a lot of fun things to do over there. I was just going to mention that. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> We're going on that water slide. Oh, yeah, on the water slide. We're going to um, Outdoor World or something like that. Yeah. we got a big water slide, yeah. so it'll be yeah. fun. All right, friends. Mark Spence, how are you? Great. You know, we just put up, uh, just minutes ago, actually, we put up another trailer for Evolution versus God. Right. And it was funny because this is unlike, I, I can guarantee you, you've never seen a trailer put out like this from the producers <laughs> of an actual film. Do we have it, by the way, to show today? You know, we don't. Oh, we don't have it today, but... Um, so good. It's, it's a bunch of people saying how much they hated it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we ended off with saying, don't watch it. Right. <laughs> Go here to not watch it. <laughs> that always works. Yeah, it's Didn't you great. have a tract once that said... Uh, you don't look inside. Right. It, uh, it <laughs> and you open it. It was actually unfolded about 15 times, a little unfolding one. It said, <laughs> don't look inside. It says, you're looking. <laughs> I thought you would. I knew you would. You're still reading it. What's wrong with you? Stop oh, it. And it great. just went on and on. What happened with that? Uh, I, I just didn't get it redone. We need to do it. It, it sounds like I a good one, yeah. Can. Yeah. Let's mark that, Alan. We need to re-examine that one. It's All cool. right, friends. Don't look inside. On to the topic of the day. This is from Rolling Stone magazine, uh, and they, I don't know if we have a photo of this. Do we, Alan? This is what they put on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine. For those of you that don't recognize who that is, I hope it's I can John pronounce Smith. it correctly. John Smith. That's Johar Sarnaya. Johar Sarnaya, he was one of the suspects who was allegedly involved in the bombing in Boston. And here is what CNN said. Rolling Stone Magazine's decision to put, uh oh, I put the paper away, Johar Zarnaya, the accused Boston Marathon bomber, on the cover of its latest issue has ignited a firestorm of outrage online. The space is more often than not reserved for rock stars and celebrities. Oh, look, someone said, Rolling Stone Magazine is glamorizing terrorism. Awesome. Uh, Adrian Graham commented on the magazine's Facebook page, I will not be buying this issue or any further issues. Words such as tasteless, sickening, and disgusting flew around social media. So, Ray, what do you think? We were just talking about 
human nature. Yes, Do you think Rolling Stones is playing I think that? it's very sad they didn't have the usual wholesome rock stars on the front. <laughs> <laughs> right. Someone good and lovely to look oh, at. Usually absolutely. it's all kinds of piercings yeah. and tattoos. But I think it's great for sales. I mean, this you really is, think that's well, the whole... Here, you and I are talking about right. Rolling Stone magazine. The whole world's talking about Rolling Stone magazine, which is exactly what they want. They want it talked yeah. about. It's, it's creating... We, we do the same thing in open air. We create conflict. Right. We do not want passivity when you're open air preaching. You want someone in contention to create a few sparks so that people will come and listen. Um, Sue and I often watch House Hunters on... Tell, you ever watch House Hunters? I oh, love it. And it's great. International yeah, too. people go out, they're looking for houses, and you give the inside story, and they tell you how much the house is worth and what the blah, blah, blah. And they always create conflict. And right. I say to Sue, look at that. The husband says, I don't like this. And the wife says, I like it. And that's the conflict. Yeah. Otherwise, the whole thing would be boring. So that's what this is about. I think this is about sales. They had a, a meeting and said, look, things are a bit low. Let's do something a little bit naughty and put this guy on the front. And right. they did. And here we are talking about it. Mark, well, if you were their PR guy, uh, would you advise us? And do you think this can backfire on them? You know, honestly, I don't see how it can backfire on them. I mean, the people who are going to be purchasing that magazine anyways uh, have a bit of living on the edge sort of mentality as it is. Right. There's no such thing as bad advertisement. I mean, Ray, Ray hit it. He nailed it. We would never be able to approach Richard Dawkins and ask him, hey, would you be willing to tweet to your 750,000 followers <laughs> our latest film, Evolution versus God? He wouldn't do it. Right. Yet he does it on his own freely. <laughs> Because of the controversy that's included inside this film. So it, it kind of works in the same way. No such thing as bad advertisement. You can't really pay for something like this. It's a bit risque. They did it. And guess what? They are going to be selling more magazines than they have in the past. I guarantee it. Well, you know, this is actually nothing compared to, uh, I think, either late 30s or early 40s. Time magazine uh, put Adolf Hitler on the cover and called oh. him Man of the Year. What? I'm not kidding. <laughs> yeah. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. Yeah. And was it a publicity stunt? I don't know. It was kind of stupid as far as I thought, <laughs> but uh, well, that's what I did. I mean, I'm kind of torn because, I mean, I hear what you guys are saying about no, no such thing as bad publicity, but there's got to be a, a fine line um, where people can lose supporters. Yeah, but the line's way up the street. You yeah. know, nowadays, you well, can say anything. It's believe free. it or not, well, I guess... It, nothing's hard to believe these days, but Jahar has supporters, and there are people <laughs> that are upset with Rolling Stones on the other end. Um, it says, because there is a, there is a byline. It says, uh, the bomber, how a popular promising student was failed by his family, fell into radical Islam, and became a monster. And so the free Jahar people are saying, boycott Rolling Stone, uh, calling Jahar a monster and stirring the pot even more. Shame on you. That's conflict on both Innocent sides. Innocent self-proven guilty. So I guess they thought it out the yeah. whole way through. Yeah, so let's say something nasty about them so that we're seen as the good guys by somebody. Right. You know, yeah. I guarantee there's T-shirts now with that guy's face on it. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. And, um, you won't find them on Loving Waters, though. Yeah. You know, and, and on the other hand, you've got people, no doubt, fighting for his rights. It just seems like some things are backwards these days. You know, some things? It, oh, all things. It's everything. almost everything is upside down. Yeah. Evil's good. Good is evil. No ethics. Tragic. And what a tragedy that whole bombing was for those of you that were clued into it. I, although we move quickly as people, you know, it's almost a forgotten thing. <laughs> Absolutely. But you think of the, the, the tragedy that was involved. And so please continue to pray for the families that lost loved ones and, and for continued opportunities for the gospel because no doubt in that city it's still alive. That's why on September the 11th, uh, every year I try and make myself watch uh, 911. Right. You know, just so I don't forget because that was the, the ultimate tragedy. So Horrible. easy to forget. All right, friends, moving on now to our What Would You Say segment where we take an evangelism clip, stop it after the question is asked, and then talk about how we would answer it. So if we've got that cued, let's roll it. Bruce, give me your best question. What's your best question? So what was the question? <laughs> the question was hard to hear. Why do you think people believe in a God who doesn't give any evidence for his existence? That was your buddy Bruce. The friendly atheist. Back out atheist. Yeah, he shaved his beard off at one stage, and I said, <laughs> shame on you. <laughs> but and he, he had a little, like, weird thing going it's on. It's a there. soup dripper or something. Anyway, we, right. we went, we, didn't we go to lunch with him? 
Uh, I think you was I just that was just you and me. No, I mean, him did. and me. No, <laughs> it was just you and me at lunch. <laughs> I do remember him coming to the ministry. That's though, right. Well, sure. I had lunch with him. It was just him and I, and then we came back and did a tour of the ministry. Uh, Bruce is a nice guy. He's got some foolish uh, philosophies, uh, and he brings groups like, constantly, right? Yeah, he brings groups constantly, and uh, I've had lunch with him, and yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah. So, Mark, um, how would you answer that? Bruce says, "Why would people believe in a God who doesn't give any proof?" or evidence for his existence? You know, I might attack in a couple of different ways. Just a couple of thoughts off the top of my head. I might ask, well, what kind of evidence were you hoping God would give? Right. What evidence would be admissible in the courtroom of your mind where you'd say, oh, wow, there is a God. What do you know? Now, we know that Romans 1 tells us that every man, woman, and child already believes in God. There are no such thing as atheists. They've suppressed the truth in unrighteousness. I think it was Greg Bonson who uh, once said, it's a lot like uh, arguing, on, arguing with somebody on the existence of oxygen. Sorry. You believe that there is oxygen. Your person you're talking to does not believe in oxygen. And when they give all of their points on why oxygen does not exist, all the while they are taking in oxygen with every breath they take to proceed every objection they have against oxygen. Yeah. Well, that's the way it is. When you say there is no such thing as God, everything they begin to downplay as evidence is actual evidence for the existence of God. So I, I don't know if I would spend uh, too much time on it. I really like the way that Ray deals with it. He gives it almost a half chuckle in the midst of it. <laughs> he befriends them. They're having lunch the next time. And next thing you know it, and they're just best friends friends. Ray just has a way of doing that. He, he almost gets his emotions unattached because he knows that they're blind. They can't come to the Savior unless the Lord opens up their eyes, and he just makes the best of it, and he pleads with them, and he gets uh, right to the point. He sticks to the conscience using the law. It's, it, it is the way to go when dealing with atheists, for sure. You know, I think this really deserves a scientific study. Why can Ray <laughs> Comfort get away with things that most of us would get beaten up for? It's because of my height. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Big guys get beaten up all the time. Remember, uh, Han you remember Hank, the first guy we ever filmed for uh, The Way of the Master? Seven foot Hank. Did he pick you up? Uh, he did. Uh, I was standing on a step stool, but yeah, he grabbed me by the he's shirt. Not like he's not seven foot, six foot eleven or something oh, like man. that. You I'm know, sorry for my exaggeration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Hank said before he was a Christian, six foot eleven, he, if he went into a bar, uh, he'd get picked on. Drunks would come up and start pushing him and say, trying to beat him up. Right. And uh, that never happened to me. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I remember what happened with Billy in New Zealand. I'm having a nice, friendly, gentle conversation. Next thing I know, the guy's choking me and <laughs> slapping me. And Mark Spence is filming it, of course. Of course. I like what you said in that encounter. Yeah. Can you? That's, that's what I'm known by. People are like, you look familiar. Oh, that's who you are. So anyway, Hank uh, would get try and topple because he has a big tree to topple. Right. And so the drunk would feel good. And But uh, I'm just a twig. And this, <laughs> this, this I think no it's the accent too, Ray. Something it is? I, you're, just dis, you're disarming. I don't know what it is. Yeah, so weird. how did you answer, Bruce? Do you even remember? No. <laughs> I knew you were going to say no that. I have no idea. Why did I even ask? <laughs> I don't know. Why, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Mark gave an excellent answer on that. Good. And it, 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 you, had, you I do can't have remember to what Mark said. <laughs> right. You do have to chuckle because it's hilarious to see a human being who is exercising the gift of speech, who's using his brain to communicate, who's listening to you at the same time audibly and making sense of what you're saying, who's using recall to deny that he was fashioned and formed by God. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a fish oh. in the ocean saying there's no evidence there's an ocean. Right. Yeah. That, uh, like Mark said, someone <laughs> denying air while they're using it to make their very statement. Or like a man at noon denying the sunlight. Yeah. yeah or someone eating a bologna sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep going here. A big bologna sandwich. <laughs> a very big I one. walked on the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, okay. So we are moving on now to another question. This is an email from Mike. A guest pastor spoke at our church this Sunday. The message was entitled, People who aren't interested in the good news of Jesus won't be motivated by the bad news of hell. He said that we don't need to mention hell when we preach the gospel. He said he follows the book of Acts and that the disciples never preached about hell. How would you reply? Because when I mentioned the rich man and Lazarus, he said that was directed toward the Pharisees. He also said that the letters are addressed to the church and not to the unsaved. And I forgot to bring my notes that helped me answer this question. You so. said you'll have to fake it. You know, <sighs> uh, I don't think the book of Acts mentions a new birth. 
Right. <laughs> so therefore, you don't need to be born again. And yeah. besides, Jesus was referring, uh, speaking to Na uh, Nazareth, <laughs> Nicodemus, <laughs> right. when he said that. So that's not applicable to anyone else, but Nicodemus is just ridiculous. And why do we need a savior if there's no hell? Right. I mean, that's, you, all you're going to do is fill the church with false converts if you don't preach the existence of hell. Because no one's going to flee from the wrath that's to come unless they believe there's wrath to come. And there's no wrath if there's no hell. And um, that's the only reason our ministry exists, because right. hell exists. Yeah. If hell didn't exist, I'd still be serving. Right. And you think of what Paul said, too, in Acts 17. He said, God has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Right. You have to understand that the, the things that are listed for us in Acts are not always complete sermons. It's not everything that was said. Uh, it, it includes what was said, but it doesn't mean it was everything that was said as well. Yeah. Uh, and so that's one point there. I had some others to make, but I'll let Mark make some, and maybe I'll remember what my notes said. Mark. Well, you know, Jesus spoke uh, more about hell than all of the disciples put together. Right. In fact, he talked more about hell than he spoke about heaven. Uh, C.H. Spurgeon, he said, when men talk of a little hell... It's because they think they have only a little sin, mm. and they believe in a little Savior. It is altogether little, but when you get a great sense of sin, you'll want a great Savior and feel that if you do not have him, you will fall into a great destruction and suffer a great punishment at the hands of a great God. Mm. Hell is a very real place. Not only does it make logical sense in comparison to here in, in this world, we with our finite minds are able to set up... Um, a prison system, whether it be civil or federal court, if you break the law, you either do the time or you pay the fine. How much more with God when God's eyes are in every place? Keep right. watch of the good as well as the evil. He's going to make sure that sin is punished wherever it's found, but the problem is sin is attached to the sinner. You can't punish sin. It makes no sense. You have to punish the sinner. So when you begin to just simply relate to somebody in this means, where you begin to relate civil and federal courts and how we set up our judicial system here on earth, it begins to make sense when you relate that over to God, how God is the judge of the universe, and he'll judge the living and the dead. Right. You know, we, we can relate the two, and it begins to make sense. Hmm. But we have to remember that as we examine the Gospels, that Jesus most definitely spoke about hell, and we need to as well. We need to warn people to flee from the wrath which is to come. So right. do people not, preachers not preach about hell because they don't offend the people or they don't, they're worried about their own skin? You know, I, I think it may be a little of both. I, I think this person's question really comes from a pragmatic perspective. In other words, what works or if hey, this doesn't work, well, then this won't work, you right. know, is what they're saying. Hey, if they're not going to be convinced by heaven, they won't be by hell. But friends, the... The, the real standard is not what works and what doesn't work. The, worst, the real standard is speaking truth. Right. We preach hell regardless of whether or not it scares people or not. Should it scare people? Well, logically speaking, uh, yeah, it should. But we speak it because it's the truth, because it's reality. It's what Scripture teaches, and it's what all these characters in Acts who are preaching taught in their epistles and, and, and in their writings. And so it's really important to, to remember that. And um, The scary and thing the is truth. that uh, preaching a hellless gospel can have a measure of a success. It can fill your church. You right. can have a very successful church with big numbers, but you're not filling the church. You're filling your church, and that's very, very scary. Yeah. No, it's, it's a terrifying idea. And I know that there are pastors out there who – end up getting what they really didn't want, which is a church that's big, <laughs> but that's full of Problem problematic people, people who don't know Christ. And before you know it, they're getting on your board somehow, and now they're trying to oust you because they don't like what you're preaching. I mean, can think I say something here? What, you want yes. Mark, see if you can find the ho-ho sir surgeon uh, quote from Charles Spurgeon. Oh, that's a good uh, one. Because that very, is very, very applicable. Yeah. What were you saying? Well, I was saying, well, think of what's happened to universities that started out as beacons of light that existed to raise up pastors and Christian leaders and spread truth to the world. Yale, Harvard, Princeton, I mean, you can go down the line. Yeah. They're the most godless institutions now, and uh, they blaspheme the God that they were supposed to represent. I remember going to Yale University back in the mid-90s and preaching open air and doing some teaching there, and, and they had water fountains with, if any man thirsts, let him come to me and drink wow. in, the, in the actual stone. And then they showed me the uh, chaplain's office, which was now used as a homosexual uh, meeting club. Oh, place. you're kidding Mark me. has the ho-ho sir surgeon quote from Charles Spurgeon. Yeah, it reads as follows. Ho-ho sir surgeon, you're too delicate to tell the man that he is ill. You hope to heal the sick without their knowing it. 
you therefore flatter them. And what happens? They laugh at you. They dance upon their own graves. And at last, they die. Your delicacy is cruelty. Your flatteries are poisons. You are a murderer. Shall we keep men in a fool's paradise? Hmm. Shall we lull them into soft slumbers from which they will awake in hell? Are we to become helpers of their damnation by our smooth speeches? In the name of God, we will not. It becomes every true minister of Christ to cry out loud and spare not. For God hath set a day in which he will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you are murderous. You're a murderer, which is what it is. I mean, you're, you've got the blood of a human being on your hands if you do not warn them. And that's what scripture teaches. Right. Mm. But you know, Ray, I think, again, there's a misconception that people have that when you speak about the truths of hell or about the fact that people are sinners and they, and they violated the law of a holy God, that somehow you have to be harsh. You have yeah. to be overbearing. You have to be offensive unnecessarily in a sense. But you've done this countless times and I don't see people typically, I mean, you always have people that are people, but people getting upset and angry. I mean, you see some of the people even in our Evolution versus God film and I'm a liar and an adulterer. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you know what I'm saying? It's not like they're angry, but sometimes people smile out of nervousness, but yeah. it's like dawning on them. It's because of the use of the law to bring the knowledge of sin and the working of the conscience. The conscience is given by God to affirm the truth of each of the commandments. Yeah. I like what Scotty does. Scotty takes three people through the, through the, uh, the IQ tests and he explains to them what they did wrong. When they get seven questions wrong, he says, this is where you went wrong, and he gives them extra knowledge. Right. And then he says, okay, I'm going to explain a misunderstanding you have about the things of God. And he takes them through the commandments and then preaches hell and judgment and says, you wouldn't have stayed and listened to me if I would just said you're going to hell. But because I opened up the commandments, this extra knowledge makes it make sense for you. Right. And that's what the law does. Paul reasoned with Felix about righteousness, temperance, and judgment. And, re and Felix trembled. Why did he tremble? Because suddenly hell made sense. Because when you the law, use the law, it becomes reasonable. Right. And I like the phrasing that you use. It, the law helps create tear-filled converts as yeah. opposed to fear-filled converts. Yes, and that's our aim. We want them to be broken before God because they recognize their guilt. You know, when I use the illustration that I've used on here before of, of showing someone that it's not just our sin, but it's who it's committed against. And yes. I lift up the holiness of God. And I use a whole illustration with threatening to kill a person on the street versus threatening to kill the president of the United States and how the, the repercussions are different. You know, a common person, you might be put in jail for the night. You might be warned. You might be told to, to leave or whatever. But the president of the United States, you're going to do 20 years in federal prison if you don't get shot on the spot. Right. And so when we lift up the holiness of God, we lift up his standard, it's going to cause people to recognize not, oh, God is such a harsh God, he wants to throw me in hell, but I'm such a wicked sinner to sin against a God who's so holy. And what a merciful, loving God that he'd yes. send his son to die on a cross and rise again to give us life. Yeah. You know, so, so hold up that standard, friends. And uh, again, if you're not familiar with what we're talking about here. Maybe this is your first time watching the program. Maybe you've watched it for a certain amount of time, but you don't quite get what Ray's saying. Go to livingwaters.com and check out the free Hell's Best Kept Secret audio there, and that'll help fill in the blanks for you. So, Excellent. All right, on to a little announcement. As I mentioned before, I am going to be speaking at the MIA Life Benefit, benefit Concert. You're going to speak there, right? You're going to be speaking. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. There I am. If I'll be able to speak clearly on that day. That's great. Uh, that is July 27th at 4 p.m., and tickets are $10. Proceeds will go to Corona Life Services. Uh, it's a pro-life organization. It's a pregnancy crisis uh, clinic that uh, my wife and her friend actually took someone to, and their baby was saved. So check that out. You can go to CM calliance.org cm alliance cmcalliance.org and check that out for more information or cm Colliance. yeah I'll really <laughs> want to do that <laughs> oh we're having a good time today Mark Spence please take us to the tool of the day yeah the today's tool of the day is one of Ray's books here it's, it says uh, you can lead an atheist to evidence but you can't make him think answering mm -hmm. to questions answers to questions from angry skeptics uh, the forward is by Darren Raspberry. He's an atheist, as only Ray would put a forward by an atheist to <laughs> one, one of his books. But uh, it's very easy reading. It's about 135 pages uh, or so. So if you have questions that you can't answer from atheists, I dare to say they're probably found within these two pages. 
There it is, available at livingwaters.com. And if you go to Amazon.com, don't read the comments. There are hundreds of them from atheists, <laughs> and they went there. They conspired to go, because uh, that book, not Dawkins' book, off the, uh, uh, the Amazon.com, right. uh, uh, so it knocked it off. So they got really angry, and over 200 of them went in and gave it low ratings. Uh, <laughs> one star, two star, bringing it down from five stars down to two stars. Uh, I just cannot believe how much a part of atheist lives <laughs> you are, seriously. <laughs> it's just crazy, isn't it, that, that 200 of them would spend the time. It's actually amus amus amusing. amusing. It's amusing to read the comments. They, they go on and what a terrible book it is, and you just know they haven't even opened the right. page. But I think it's a love-hate thing. You yeah. know, they hate you, but they love you, and they don't know what to do with you, but you keep their lives interesting. <laughs> oh, well, three that's out of five stars on Amazon.com. Ah, it's climbing 303 up. ratings. That's not bad, Ray. How and many stars? Three out of five. Three out of five. Well, that's not bad. Maybe Christians are going there and even it up. <laughs> right. Well, here's tell, the thing. You have 132 the people that give it five stars. Almost nobody gave it four stars. Almost nobody gave it three stars. Almost nobody gave it two stars. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have 151 people gave it one star. Right. <laughs> And it's all by men. Can you Dawkins. go below a one star? I bet they wish they could. <laughs> right. A fallen star. Don't give them ideas, Ray. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, that's one of the most clever titles of any book I've ever seen. Mm. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Please no, do not kidding. get into that habit. <laughs> Easy does that all the time. He says, You're looking nice <laughs> today. Just kidding. It's great. Take someone from up here to down <laughs> here and split does. a second. And then you say, just kidding about just, just kidding. kidding and lift them up. Right. Oh, All boy. right, friends. Um, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, we have a question. This is from Joseph. It says in Mark 8, 38, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. What does this verse mean? Is it talking about a false Christian I don't quite understand the implication if this ver of this verse. Can you guys help? Ray, we don't have much time, but what would you say? Oh, I think what I read when I read that is, uh, Jesus, whoever is ashamed of me and my words, I see the emphasis on my words. Most people in America aren't ashamed of Jesus. I mean, I've got a fish on the back of my car, what are you talking about? Right. You know, real men love Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we're ashamed of his words, particularly when he mentions hell and judgment. We, we're afraid of, to say that to people. Um, but it really sorts out the sheep from the goats, those that stand up and faithfully preach God's word. And there are a lot of false converts in the body of Christ. And uh, false converts normally don't stand up and preach the words of Jesus in truth and in sincerity. Mm. I pray the church will come to a place where it gets radically ashamed over being ashamed of Christ, yeah. who hung publicly before the world to redeem our souls. <laughs> we'll never understand ever mm. what it cost the Holy Son of God to give himself over into the hands of his own creation to be blasphemed by the very vocal cords and lips and tongues he fashioned and wow. formed wow. and to give his life that we might be redeemed. Uh, seriously, we all, we all have those moments where we're foolish enough to be ashamed for whatever reason. We need serious repentance. And what blows me away beyond all that is that he still sympathizes with our weaknesses mm -hmm. uh, as his people. So let's preach the gospel and represent him with boldness. Check us out on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, and on onthebox.us. God bless you. We'll see you again, Lord willing, tomorrow. Just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> for questions about On the Box with Ray Comfort or to submit questions for future shows, please email onthebox at livingwaters.com. That's onthebox at livingwaters.com. On the Box with Ray Comfort is an outreach of Living Waters. For more resources to inspire and equip you to fulfill the Great Commission, check out livingwaters.com or call toll free. 1-800-437-1893. Now go and preach the gospel.